In the first video tutorial, we used Bonsai 3D to create a 3D model of the existing building using just a photograph and a couple of basic measurements. Now that we have a good starting point, let's begin conceptualizing our new design changes. We turned off a few layers and will apply a white material for clarity. Let's add a couple additions to the back. Using the offset segment tool, we'll offset and insert a couple segments in about three feet. And then using the reshape tool, we can reshape that new face out and we'll go about 28 feet with that space. Let's use the offset segment tool again and we'll offset a segment about 15 feet across. And then using the reshape tool again, I can reshape that new face outward and we'll pull that out maybe 25 feet. So there's some new spaces for us. Now to convert those into walls, what I could do is use the offset outline tool and offset an outline about six inches and then use the reshape tool and reshape that through to subtract that part of the, of the material. Now, of course, we could have just drawn the walls directly if we wanted also, besides doing massing. Let's add a roof. Select the roof tool, click on the top face of the object, and since we're using the same parameters as before, the roof in the front is the same as the original roof. And the transition from the new additions are automatically resolved for us in the new roof. Now let's say we would like to add a dormer to the front of the building here. A couple different ways we can do that. One method would be to have some predefined dormers that are already constructed and saved for us in our content libraries, and we can just place them into our scene. In this example, we'll actually build one from scratch. We'll begin by drawing a 2D rectangle on the slope of the roof. Select the rectangle tool, 2D icon, and make sure the insert option is turned off so it generates it as a separate object. And there's our 2D rectangle, about six inches wide. And then what we'll do is use the extrusion tool and make sure you choose the perpendicular to reference plane option so that we can extrude the rectangle straight up instead of perpendicular to the face. And there's our solid wall. Let's insert some windows. Use the place window tool. We have a custom window that we've already created and we can simply place that into the wall. Now let's reshape the wall to the size that we want. Using the reshape tool, I'll reshape the face and snap it to the frame of the window and then reshape it again out six inches. Let's do the same on the other side. Snap it to the frame and then reshape it again out six inches. I need to make the top of the wall flat, so I'll use the 2D rectangle tool, and make sure we choose the 3D extrude icon with the insert option turned on, so I can draw the rectangle on the side face and push it through to subtract that portion to make the top flat. And I'll reshape that down, snapping to the frame so it's flush with the top of the windows. Now I need to create the walls extending back into the roof, so I'll use the offset segment tool, and offset a segment on the left over six inches and offset this segment over six inches. Then using the reshape tool, I can select that new reshaped face and reshape that into the roof. And now notice I'm snapping to the point of the roof so that it goes all the way through. And you can see in wireframe that it's extending through that solid roof. Let's put a roof on the dormer by first defining the boundary of the roof. Do a 2D rectangle without the insert option so it's a separate 2D rectangle that we create by snapping to the corners. And then using the roof tool, I click on the face and the roof is generated. And of course, I'll have to set the parameters to the type of roof that I want. We can add more details using pretty much the same tools we've been using earlier. For example, the offset segment, let's offset a segment six inches and then use the reshape and reshape the face in six inches. Offset segment again on the side, let's go in about one foot on the left and insert a segment over one foot on the right hand side. And then we'll reshape that face inward and type in four return and we can go in four inches. Put a little trim molding on the sides. We'll create that as a separate object. So we'll use the rectangle tool, 3D extrude icon. And of course the insert option is now off. So it's generated as a separate piece of molding. Snap to the corner of the frame in the house and type in two return to make it two inches. Snap to the corner points type in to return for a height of two inches. And there's the rest of our details for our dormer. The last thing we need to do is trim the back of the dormer so it matches the slope of the roof. In wireframe, you can see that it still extends into the solid roof. First thing we'll do is pick the main roof and copy it to the Bonsai 3D clipboard by hitting Command C on Mac or Control C on Windows. Then we'll choose the Boolean difference tool. Select the roof of the dormer first and then select the main roof and the main roof is then subtracted from the dormer roof. Let's try this again. Paste the main roof back in. Select the Boolean difference tool again. 
click on the walls, and then click on the main roof. And now that volume is subtracted from the walls. There's a little nodule left over where the roof must have gone through to the other side of the roof, so we'll just delete that. Paste the main roof back in, and now our dormer matches the slope of the roof. Let's apply some new materials to our new objects. Drag and drop the roof onto the main roof, and drag and drop the siding to the walls. Now we need to apply different materials to different faces of the roof object. So hold down the Command Can Mac or the Control Can Windows, and you can drag and drop the material onto just a single face of that object. So the roof material goes just on those faces, and the siding material will go just onto the front face only. And as we saw earlier, if we need to readjust the automatic mapping, we can use the Map Texture tool. Click on the object, and it will automatically readjust the mapping system for us. Let's make a copy of the dormer for the other side. Select the Pick tool and Window Pick all the objects. Select the Move tool with the Copy icon selected. Click and drag, and I can snap to the automatic red guideline to maintain alignment across the x-axis. How about a new front porch roof? We'll select the Move tool with the Copy icon selected. Hit the Command Can Mac or Control Can Windows, and I can make a copy of the top face from the porch. Let's give that a white color. Drag and drop the white server style onto it. And I'll go into wireframe, and what I'm going to do is move just a single segment of the back of that rectangle that I have. Make sure you have the self icon picked. Hold the Command Can Mac or Control Can Windows to select just that segment and drag it so it extends further into the house. Then we'll select our roof tool, click on that rectangle, and there's our roof. Let's add a, a little more detail just like we did before, offset segments. Give it some trim around the outside. Reshape the center face. And if we want to get rid of some of those additional extra segments that are in there, we can use the Unmesh tool to get rid of those extra edges that are there. I would like to create a sloped section of shingles at the front of the porch roof. We'll begin by selecting the Vector Line Drawing tool, 2D Surface icon, and make sure the Insert option is turned off. Let's go to our Grid Snap options and hover the mouse over the Grid Snap icons and we can change the Snap Interval from 2, change it to 3. Now we can snap to the end point of the roof. and Then we can snap, because our interval is set to 3, one third of the way up along the inside face. Snap at those locations. And now we've created a sloped, flat plane in the front of our porch roof. And just as we did before, we'll hold on the Command Can Mac or the Control Can Windows, and we'll drag and drop different materials onto different faces of our front porch roof. In wireframe view, you'll see that our front porch roof still extends inside the main roof. So just like we did with the dormers, we'll have to Boolean difference the front porch to match the slope of the main roof. So we click on the front porch roof, then click on the main roof, and the main roof is then subtracted or differenced out from the main front porch roof. Now everything matches perfectly. The last modeling operation we'll look at is the ornate detail of the new columns. We do this by drawing a 2D profile and using the Revolve tool to revolve that 2D line around any vector line axis to create a solid object such as we see here for our new columns. Our modeling is now complete. We'll finish up with some new landscaping, as we described earlier. And now we have a good vision of the transformation of our ugly duckling into a beautiful residence. Thanks to Vision Cell and Bonsai 3D.